Win number 13 for number 13, Jordan Travis, as Florida State completes a perfect season. 13-0. There he is, the injured star quarterback for the Seminoles as they win the ACC championship 16-6. It wasn't pretty, but the Seminoles got it done. The biggest play of the game, Tatum Bethune with an interception in the end zone. Lawrence Toafili running for over 100 yards and a touchdown as Brock Glenn starts in place of backup Tate Rodemaker out because of a concussion and Florida State ACC champ for the first time since 2014. He's so man twice. Here in studio with Emory Hunt, former Louisiana running back and former Florida State standout, <laughs> Brian McFadden. <laughs> BMAC, um, your defense got it done. A shots to Tatum Bethune with the interception in the end zone got it done. Yes. Uh, elite level defense showed up for four quarters tonight. I literally was watching the game with my helmet on because I was feeling the vibes. I was feeling the energy in a, in a night where our defense had no room for error, right? And I understand when you talk about the eye test. I mean, we were on the road. We played against a top 15 opponent with our third string freshman quarterback, by the way. We never trailed in this ball game. We held a top 20 offense to six points. And now we're 13 and 0. Power five champions with top with four top 25 wins. So me personally, when you look at what our defense did today, I mean, they need to be ha happy that we play with our third string quarterback because the way our defense played, if we had Tate Rodemaker, who knows how ugly the game would have been for Louisville. He, uh, listen, He's out here campaigning, I, and, I, I, and I don't blame him. He, he should be. I, I, I like when B-Mac is on, you know, petty time, because I'm on petty time with him, right there with him, locked up, because I'm going to make the big selling point for Florida State, right? Because Florida State can now say, hey, no one wants us in the college football playoffs. Well, we won the championship. We're going to be in. No one wants to see us. Why? Because they have a great defense. They did a great job playing defense all season long. And B-Mac talked about those rank wins. One was against the SEC in Mr. Uh, LSU over there, who will win the Heisman Trophy, and Jaden Daniels. Yep. They also knocked off Louisville tonight, which everyone kind of thought Louisville was going to win. You know, and also they knocked off Duke at the one point in time. Duke was beating everybody. Uh, they beat Clemson when they were ranked high. So Florida State has a really good resume. And when you look at their resume compared to Alabama, especially in an out-of-conference games, it trumps Alabama's out-of-conference record. So for me, this is a shoe-in. And they also have the underdog story. They could be this year's villain story because they're playing with the backup. Because their defense, like BMAC said, had no room for error, they had to go out there and win it themselves. Talk about the big play they gave up to get down inside the, the red zone, the, the block punt, right? And then now you have to go out there. You look like you caught the interception. They called it incomplete, out of bounds. You come back and catch the interception. So this was won by Florida State's defense. Their run game showed up. And you can still beat people in 2023 with run game and defense. So I think Florida State should be in. Now the question is, are they a two seed or are they a three seed? BMAC, one of my mentors in television told me to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And I know you got some phrases like that from your college football playing days and your NFL days. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable right now because I'm going to press you. If you're not wearing a Florida State helmet right now hmm. and you're not wearing a Florida State polo and you're not wearing Florida State underoos, make the case why the Seminoles shouldn't get into the CFP. I can't. I'm sorry. He can't. He can't. He, you, so I you're can't. telling me you can't be, you can't say that Florida State doesn't get in. No, I can't because I think the number one rule in regards to being able to get into the playoffs is to do what? Beat the teams that you face off against, right? right? Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. They beat the everybody in front of them. The team Florida State has played, they haven't beaten. But you could we say can't. the same. You could say the same for, 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 for the argument that, that Emory makes with Liberty. They're undefeated. They don't play in Power Five. Shout though. out to Liberty. So do you know what I'm saying? Like, like I hear, I hear, I hear that argument. No, no. I hear that no, argument. No, no. But then you no. look at the team itself. You think that they're going to beat any of the other three, four, five top teams? Wait a minute. You can't make the same case for Liberty because how many top 25 opponents did Liberty beat? I, I agree, but you just said they're undefeated. So yeah, they're undefeated. Right. They played the everybody in front of them. Competition that we defeated. 
right? We have four top 25 wins. At the time when we kicked LSU in the teeth, they were top five. We beat them yep. by 21 points. You did. On a neutral, in a neutral uh, stadium. And then you talk about when we played Clemson. Even though Clemson wasn't right at the time, that was a difficult game. Then we, we, took, we took care of business against Duke. We took care of business against Louisville tonight with our third spring quarterback, who was a true freshman. This guy only had three, four pass attempts in his college career. How many times in a cha- how many teams in a championship setting, in a conference championship setting, can stay? They can go to battle with a third stringer who's a true freshman with no experience and still find a way to win, not only win, but cover the spread. Is Florida State one of the four best remaining teams, Emory? Yes, they are. We just watched tonight them. Everyone talked about Louisville's offense. They scored six American points tonight, right? So you look at what that defense did. That's insane production from a defense. The run game is good. They're still explosive. And Rodemaker, let's see what he gives them in terms of coming back uh, in a passing game. But it's going to be better than what we saw tonight in the rain with a third-string true freshman quarterback in a conference championship game. And now you have a team that heard all the noise, heard all the naysayers. They feel like they can believe. And it, listen, we saw them slide out of there like B-Max slid that helmet on with those juices and berries in his head. We saw all of that tonight, right? So we saw them go out there in an adverse situation, you know, in the, in the torrential downpour. It was raining out there all night long and found a way to win. I remember Coach Bowden used to tell us all the time, before a ball game or during his halftime speech, Defense, if you don't let them score, we win. <laughs> every time, every ball game. Hey, man, defense, you don't let them score? Guess what? We win. Our defense did not let them score a touchdown. And that was the deciding factor. And I'll, and I'll repeat this again. I don't know how many championship teams in a championship setting can win a ball game with their third-string quarterback who's a true freshman. We did that tonight. We won, and we covered the spread easily. So our defense, we have what I'll tell you, I'll say this right now, out of the teams that we watch play on championship Saturday and championship Friday, we have the best defense by far. We have pros. We have first rounders. We got guys that tackle well. We got guys that execute well in the back end. We got guys that can win one-on-ones to put pressure on quarterbacks. We just need a little bit of help. And it was difficult to get help because this man, Brock Lynn, came in a very, very difficult situation. He was asked to pass a test without studying. Didn't have any cliff notes or anything. He tried. He did his best. You can tell the moment was too big for him. But the defense said, you know what, young fella? I'm your Uber driver. You requested an Uber X. We pulled up in the Uber XL. We put in everybody in the ride, and we're going to get to our destination. Just sit back, buckle up, and we're going to get to where we're supposed to go. And the defense did that. Great job being an Uber driver defense. Adam Fuller, his staff, did a phenomenal job. I might go to sleep with my Florida State helmet on tonight, by the way. Well, I hope that you have a nice comfy pillow to lay your head because I, I don't know, uh, I, I don't know how, how comfortable that, that might be. What if I were to tell you that Florida State would be a double-digit dog in the college football playoff? If you look at that, that they would be a dog to let's say Washington or to Michigan? Uh, I don't care. I would don't. be okay with that. I, I, I welcome but the doesn't that tell you? Doesn't that tell you, the, doesn't that tell you that they're not the, one of the four best teams? If they're double-digit dogs, does that not tell my you answer, that Florida State is not one of the top four teams? My answer would be, we just saw Washington, who was a nine-point underdog, do what to Oregon? We just saw today in Atlanta, Georgia, five and a half, six points, depending on where you're shopping, underdog and did what? That line only means a small piece of what we potentially might see. So if people feel that way with our backup quarterback or whoever our quarterback will be, so be. We still got to go out and play the ball game, right? And remember when they said, when word got out that Tate Rodemaker potentially might not play, what happened with the line? It started to decrease in favor of Louisville. Did we cover the spread, Emory and Hakeem? Did we? Yes, you did. Did Washington cover the spread? Well, yeah, they won straight up. <laughs> did Alabama cover the spread? Yes. So I can care less if they, hypothetically speaking, would have but us a But the quality of opponent underdog. is different. Florida State's playing Play Louisville. Alabama's playing the number one team in the country. 
and Washington was playing the number five team in the country. So it's a little well, different. They already, beat, they already beat Oregon. They, they, they beat Oregon already. So And it wasn't like Washington was playing bad football. They didn't no. lose a game. Right? So I understand where you're going in regards to what we think will happen, but we never know until we actually see the game played. So for us, one thing I'll say, and I'll say this again, if the playoffs were to start today and if Florida State makes the playoffs, who has the best defense in playoff in playoff football? All right, you B-Mac, tell me. Let, me. let me spin it forward, right? I'm turning page on. on, on I got to ask you some serious questions, B Mac, because I want to be sure I get it down um, before you know everything get chaotic on tomorrow. Or, you know when we figure out who's in the postseason. Who would you want to see Florida State play in round one? Well, it depends on who get in. Number one, we know Michigan getting in. We know Washington getting in, yep. right? I like our chances against either one of those teams. And the reason why I, I will say that is because Michigan has been dominant the entire season outside of Ohio State. And y'all understand you talk about Iowa's defense, but Iowa don't got a lot of guys that's going to play on Sunday. They got a few. I love, the, I love the guys in the secondary, but in regards to putting pressure on quarterbacks, we got one of the best to ever do it. And old, and old Fisk, he's going to be a draftable guy as well. Not to mention what you talk about in the young fella in Peyton. So if we were to play Michigan, our defense is going to present challenges that Michigan hasn't consistently seen the entire season. And if we were to play Washington, so I like our chances against either one because I'll say this time and time again. College football is about two things in regards to winning championships. You got to have okay coaching, a pretty good coaching, but you got to have players that's going to play on Sunday. We got players that's going to play on Sunday. Yep. The last team that the you last do. team that won the last two championships in Georgia, their whole team is where in yeah. the national in the, 